Hey guys, welcome back to Sports Spectrum. I am Jason Romano. It is Super Bowl week. I'm here in Tampa, Florida. And normally the man I'm talking to would be here as well if this was a normal year for the Super Bowl. But Stefan Wisniewski, who's the Kansas City Chiefs offensive lineman, he's still in Kansas City uh, because he has to hang out there because it's a different year with the Super Bowl. Last year, Stefan and I and many others got to, got to hang out down in Miami. And this year, he doesn't get to Tampa until later this week but we welcome back steph into sports spectrum what's up man how are you congratulations doing great great glad to be here with you jason and uh yeah excited to be at another super bowl yeah it's the third now i mean this is kind of cool for you i mean and it, they've all had such unique sort of journeys to get to those moments and get to those super bowls this year was was fascinating to watch your career and your journey kind of take to take it to where it took you um but how's it feel let's just start there how's it feel to be back and playing for the third time in the nfl's biggest game it feels awesome um you know this year's for everybody just for nfl players it's been a different kind of year than ever before and uh i think this season's kind of felt longer you know than any other season with kind of living in quarantine and uh just all the non-stop testing and protocols and stuff we're trying to do to to keep safe and keep our season from being canceled, which, you know, we're all grateful. We were able to play a whole season, uh, kind of a small miracle. Everyone was able to pull that off. A lot of props to the NFL for kind of making that happen and all the players for, you know, following the rules and whatnot. But um, been a really long year, but you know what? They're still having a Super Bowl and they're still handing out a Lombardi. So uh, I, I want to get my hands on it. The Chiefs want to, we want to get our hands on it. And uh, yeah, we're, we're excited. Yeah, you got your third chance now to do it. You won your first two, so you've never experienced the other side. And hopefully you don't have to experience it this year, too. But let's go back a little bit for you. Let's rehash the last 11 or 12 months or so. February of 2020, you're with the Chiefs. You helped them win Super Bowl 54. March of 2020, you signed with the Pittsburgh Steelers, your hometown team. So let's start there. Kind of take us back. We're also in the midst of just starting what we've still been walking through here with this pandemic and you signed a deal to go to your hometown team with, with the Pittsburgh Steelers. Take us through the mindset and just what God was doing at that time, and then we'll kind of walk through that journey together of where he's brought you to today. Yeah, I mean, it, it really seemed like, you know, it was going to be an awesome uh, opportunity for me. Grew up in Pittsburgh, always rooting for the Steelers, and, you know, went to Steeler games as a kid and had all kind of Steeler shirts and uh, everyone that I grew up, you know, friends with, they're all diehard Steeler fans, even my family, you know, my wife's family are diehard Steeler fans. My wife's from Pittsburgh as well, Hillary. Um, so we were pumped. I mean, getting to like call our families and say, guess what? I'm signed with the Steelers. Like they lost their minds. Like they were so excited. It, it really was an answer. I think to my mother's prayers of 10 years, you know, she had been praying for years that I would be closer to home, closer to home. I get drafted to the Raiders. You couldn't be farther from Pittsburgh. Right. And Thank God finally answers those prayers. So I'm going to Pittsburgh and it it's like, oh man, I'm gonna get to play at Heinz Field. Like it's gonna be this this really cool, you know, thing. And um, you know, sometimes the reality doesn't end up being as cool as as what you dreamed in your head. Um, and we'll we'll get there, I guess. I guess I can just keep going there. So, you know, we don't have an off-season virtual OTAs, which is is strange. Um, we veterans kind of liked it to be honest, because we got to sit at home and work out and didn't have to hit anybody till, till training camp. So we weren't that sad about that, to be honest. <laughs> That's always good for offensive linemen, right? <laughs> yeah. Good for we, uh, we owe linemen and we older guys. Um, so that was fine, but uh, uh, you know, training camp happens and um, you know, I had thought when I signed there, I'd have a chance to be a starter, but I'll just say that didn't, that didn't happen. Um, didn't really get a shot and uh, was just kind of heading in the mindset. I was going to be a backup which I've done before. And, um, you know, I, I attack everything with a great attitude. Yeah. Um, as a Christian, I feel like we should have the best attitudes on the team and, and in the world uh, because of an eternal and biblical perspective, but still frustrating, still tough as a competitor, you know, I want to be out there playing, but that didn't seem to be what was going to happen. I did end up getting to start one game week one due to injury. And, um, you know, it's weird. It's COVID it's an empty stadium, which, it's really hard to play in an empty stadium, to be honest. It's just the energy of the fans is that's the best part of game day. Like that's what makes it feel like game day. And without that, it's just like, is this a practice? Like, is this a scrimmage? Like what's like, what is this? Like, I don't, we don't have any like comparison. It's like, there's another team out there. We got our game uniforms on, but 
no one's here. Um, well, that's what I want people to kind of understand as we're having this conversation, right? You're talking about getting ready for the Super Bowl as a member of the Chiefs, but you started in week one for the Steelers and yeah. you're playing against the Giants. The Steelers won the game, but that ended up in a moment where you were injured and you had to get put on injured reserve uh, and kind of sitting there for two months. So where's the mindset? You don't think that you're not going to be with the Steelers at this point, but it's kind of a setback. And listen, God, I think, gives us these setbacks to kind of grow closer to him. Where's where's your mindset when you find out you're going on injured reserve? Obviously, you're disappointed because you just signed a deal and you're hoping for a long season. And now you're placed on injured reserve. Yeah, it was tough. It was my first time ever on IR. I'd never missed more than, you know, one or two weeks at a time or one or two weeks in a whole season. So it was different for me being hurt. You don't feel like you're part of the team. You kind of feel, you know, as an athlete, it's your value is kind of like, all right, what can you do for me on the field? And when you're hurt, essentially, you don't have any value, you know, to the team. Um, luckily, though, my identity's in Christ and, you know, my identity doesn't change whether I'm playing great, playing bad, starter, backup, hurt, healthy. Um, my identity is that I'm an adopted son of God through faith and I'm more than a conqueror. And um, God is with me. He's for me, not against me. He's with me through it all to the very end of the age. So um, I do believe all those things and I can rejoice in all those things, even when I'm, I'm going through a frustrating time in with football. And uh, it only kind of got weirder, you know, from being hurt. Um, I end up getting cut later, which, you know, is, is weird. I had been cut before in an off season, um, but, you know, I'd never been cut in the middle of the season before it was, it was very weird and found myself at home working out and, uh, you know, kind of looking around for a, for a team to sign with. And it's just the strangest year, you know, uh, you think it's going to go one way. It, it takes a sharp turn the other way. And sure enough, the Chiefs call and the Chiefs are like, hey, do you want to come back? And I was like, yeah, yeah, I do. <laughs> I sure do. Yeah. Well, there's 17 days. I did the math here as I'm doing this. I think I'm right on this. November 7th, you were waived by Pittsburgh. November 24th, you signed with Kansas City. So there's 17 days in there that you're without an NFL team thinking maybe it might even be longer. You don't know. The NFL is a, is a weird business sometimes, right? And you get that call. So what? take me through that 17 days. I know you said you were working out and you're staying ready. But does, does doubt creep in at this point in your journey as an, as an older, you're a veteran guy, you know, you're in your, your 31, 32, and you're getting ready for, you know, this season and then you're cut. And I'm wondering where the mindset is in those 17 days while you're waiting. Yeah, it's weird because, I mean, at my age, I'm 31, you know, been playing 10 years. It's like, like, is this it? Should I just, should I just retire? You know, should I hang it up? Um, that'd certainly be the easy thing to do, right? I mean, just trying to get back on a team and, and just get back to like being sharp with football, having not played that long. It, it, it's a big uphill battle. Yeah. Um, and that certainly would have been easier, but, you know, prayed about it, talked with my wife about it and just felt like, you know what, like, I, I want to finish this season out. Um, you know, even if this is my last season, like I didn't really want that to be the way I went out. Um, just kind of being hurt and being cut. It's like, you know what? Um, I'm a fighter. I want to go out fighting. I want to go out playing. Um, I don't know what signing with the Chiefs is going to end up looking like, but, you know, I don't want to give it a shot. And um, obviously hoped signing back with the Chiefs that, you know, I'd be able to get a chance to play. And um, most of the season, I, I didn't really play too much. Um, was a backup, played a little bit. I think I got, you know, two starts in, in the regular season. And, um, I hadn't played much in the playoffs and until now it looks like I'm going to start in the Super Bowl, which is just, it's just crazy, man. It's, it's so crazy what God can do. Um, he literally, I just, the best way I could say is God can do whatever he wants, whenever he wants. And I've seen that before. I've always trusted that, you know, when I'm struggling in a trial, like I, I know God can end this whenever he wants to. I sure wish, you know, we often wish he would end it sooner, right? Uh, the trials yeah. were in, but uh, I really believe, you know, when he's got us in those trials, it's for a purpose. Uh, we just got to trust him in it and wait. And uh, his timing will be perfect. And sure enough, here it is. Uh, just in time for the Super Bowl, I, I get a shot to play. It's it's unbelievable. Stefan Wisniewski from the Kansas City Chiefs is joining us here on Sports Spectrum. Compare this year to last year. You know, for you, last year was kind of crazy, too. And we we caught up. I remember it was Super Bowl media night. Right. It was a Monday night. You were in Miami. All of us were in Miami and we're walking through what's just an insane 
spectacle of media and different people walking around and some people are up on on podiums and you're kind of the other guys are kind of roaming around and you were roaming around and we caught up with you and we we got to talk to you for about four or five minutes you don't get a lot of time in situations and settings like that and you were just kind of smiling like man look where god has brought me how is this even possible but here i am and in a lot of ways what you just described is very similar like look what god look what you're doing and look where i am but this wasn't just a typical hey i signed a three-year deal you know three years ago and here we are and i'm with it. like you've been all over the place here but compare and contrast like last year and the trials and the lessons to what you've gone through this year. It um it really seems to be like a similar just kind of set of trials over and over where it's like I'm down, God lifts me back up, then I'm right back down, God lifts me back up, I'm right back down. It's it's really been a roller coaster ride of the last few years for me. And um there's been a lot of, you know, really low points, frustrations where my career is not at all what you know, I hoped it to be or wanted it to be. And then there's the highs of playing, starting, win the Super Bowl, where it's like, wow, this is everything I've ever dreamed of. And God's given it to me. And um, I really think he did it in that manner so that he would get all the glory. Um, I, I mean, I, I could still be unemployed. You know, I could be done with football. I could still be hurt. It, I'm really only here because God has just given me this opportunity. And I could say that about last year could say that about three years ago with the Eagles and you know what like I looking back like I couldn't have written it any better like God made it in such a way that God's like yeah I did that you you didn't do that you don't get any credit and that's better because I don't deserve any and uh it would just cause pride to well up in my heart which is a, a great enemy of a relationship with God anyway so yeah I am 100% aware that none of this is about me um, people are like, well, yeah, well, you worked hard. Like, yeah, lots of people work hard. So what? Um, and even if I have a great work ethic, like why did God give me a work ethic and he didn't give other people the same thing? It's every good and perfect gift comes from God. Uh, work ethic is, is a gift from God as well. And I can't take credit for that. God shaped me and molded me into that with my parents and my upbringing. And that's, that's a gift from him too. I, I can't even take credit for that. It's, it's all, it's all from God. It's, it's all been a gift from him. And I give him all the praise. I give him all the glory. And, and he's been the joy in it too. Um, every time when things aren't going the way that I hope they would, God's my joy. Um, I mean, I, I wake up almost every morning and worship him and he's my joy. He's my strength. And on great days, he's, that's still the best part of my day. And man, on a, on a bad day, that's, that's what carries me through is, is entering the presence of God and worship and uh, just experiencing uh, the joy of that. What's that time look like for you with God? Explain that. Cause I think some people think you're a football player. You're so busy. You're, you know, a husband, a dad, you got all these things going on. And, and uh, how do you find time with God? So what does that look like? And maybe kind of walk us through since September, right? Cause we've had Ken Chevalier on and he does a great job with Pittsburgh as their team chaplain. And they had a lot of good guys uh, kind of joining in on a Bible study there. And then you're not with Pittsburgh anymore and you're with Kansas City and you're trying to acclimate yourself back to a group that was where you were last year but then you have your own time as well with the Lord what did that look like for the say the last four or five months yeah so we did have a great Bible study with the Steelers and I really enjoyed being a part of that um, number of Christians on the team and it was fun to be like in person with a Bible study I know a lot of people during COVID like we did some Zoom Bible studies and that's great you know um did some of that as well, but it was nice to sit in person and, and just dig into the word with some, some other believers. And uh, that's always a very important part of, of spending time with God is spending that time with others, um, praying with each other, studying the word together, challenging, encouraging one another. But we still need, you know, personal time with God. And um, I try to do it almost every morning always start off studying the Bible, um, just reading God's word, and uh, always try to have some time of worship too, where I blast some Christian music and uh, try not to wake my wife up, but you know, sometimes it happens. Sorry, honey. Um, but that that just sets my attitude. It sets my mindset. And it I think it fills me with, you know, satisfaction, with joy in his presence. And if we start the day full of satisfaction in Christ and we don't have to go seeking satisfaction other places which 
aren't going to satisfy and are probably just going to get us in trouble anyway, um, because Christ is really the only thing that brings ultimate satisfaction. But if there's ever a day too where you're like, man, I, I don't really want to do this day. This day is not going to be very much fun. You start with worship, then you're like, you know what? Like, I can take this day. Like, me and Jesus, we got this. It's going to be okay. Uh, somehow he can get excited for anything uh, after you worship Jesus. I've, I've found that to be true anyway. Um, so, yeah, studying the word, worship, and then I'll usually pray on my drive to work. Um, just asking God for strength, guidance, and, uh, yeah, that's generally what that what that looks like for me. That's good. And then you come to Kansas City, and obviously – you're getting ready to play in another Super Bowl, not only play, but you're going to be starting. And it's funny because you never wish injury on anyone, obviously. And it's terrible when you watch somebody, I'm sure for you, watching a teammate go down, you're not rejoicing in that ever. But it's the NFL, and that's why you have a roster of players, and the next man up has to step up. And in this case, you're that next man up, and you're going to be starting, it looks like, in the Super Bowl. So as you prepare for this game, it's in some ways different than the – is it different than the way you prepared for – games previously when maybe you don't think you're starting or is it the same is the preparation the same in a starter role versus a role where you're just not sure if you're going to play or maybe a backup role yeah it's it's I try to kind of have the same level of readiness you know whether I'm preparing as a starter or as a backup it's harder as a backup first of all because I got to be ready for a couple different positions so usually being ready left guard, right guard, or center, which being trying to be good at three different positions at the same time is challenging. Yeah. Um, and then as a backup, you don't get as many reps in there, you know, with the ones running our plays, we actually end up, you know, running scout team plays, uh, running the other team's plays against our defense. So it's not, it's not as easy to be, you know, quite as ready uh, as a backup. I actually end up just taking a lot of reps on air. I'll just, I'll block the heck out of some air going full speed and, I, my teammates make fun of me. They like do my, my gestures and my motions. Cause you kind of look like a crazy person when you're blocking <laughs> air with the same velocity and intensity as if you were blocking a human, um, yeah. but that's fine. You know, that's what I got to do to get ready. So I do it. And um, if I'm known, if that's what you remember before that, I really blocked really hard when I wasn't blocking anyone. That, that's probably a good, I'll, I'll take that as a, as a good memory. But um, so did it help having a whole week too, Stefan, like a, a, an extra week here, between games to kind of get back into working with the ones I have to imagine that's been a bonus for you. Yeah. Yeah. Having the extra week of preparation is great. Uh, same as for, you know, our tackles who had to get some extra reps with Fisher out. And um, I think in general, it, it was definitely huge having an extra week. As we wind down, uh, thanks so much for your time. You've been generous um, on Sunday, you know, we're taping this. It's literally Sunday night, January 31st. We're going to release this in a couple of days. The game is a week from tonight. In fact, at this time that we're taping it, you'll be in uniform playing next week in front of whatever it is, 100 million people watching on TV. So it's the Chiefs and the Buccaneers. What do you think your prayer will be before you run out of that tunnel and prepare for your third Super Bowl? And maybe it's the same prayer you pray before every game, but what would that be? Yeah, you know, it's it's been my joy to uh, pray for, you know, the different teams I've been on. Um, you know, pretty much, I think every team in the league has a prayer before games and not every player on the team's there, but usually a good number of guys will will join and we'll pray together before games. And I've prayed for, you know, this team since I've been back, I prayed for this team last year and I, I really enjoy the honor of, of getting to do that. And uh, I don't know exactly, I always have a verse or two that I'll, I'll put in my prayer um, before the Super Bowl for the team. Uh, I didn't, didn't think about this year's verse yet, but I can tell you what I prayed last year. Um, on Super Bowl Sunday, uh, I, 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 I quoted David. Um, David, before his battle with Goliath, David said, the God who delivered me from the lion and the bear will deliver me from this Philistine. And I prayed that because David was going into his battle with Goliath with confidence. And Goliath was way bigger and stronger than him. And every other Philistine, or sorry, every other Israelite was terrified to fight this Goliath, this Philistine. And David says, no, the God who delivered me from the lion and the bear will deliver me from this enemy. And I just prayed that because, you know, God's delivered me and he's delivered any of us who have been to that Super Bowl from so many trials in our life. Um, and we just have to have confidence that the God who's delivered us before will deliver us again. And it's important to what David said, he didn't say, I killed a bear and I killed a lion so I can kill Goliath. 
David said, the God who delivered me from those enemies will deliver me. So his confidence isn't in himself. His confidence is in God. And that's where my confidence is. And that's why I can go any, into any game, not afraid um, of anything. You know what? God's delivered me before. God can deliver me again. God's with me. Uh, whom then shall I fear, right? And um, yeah. That's Something good. along those lines, Ben. No, that's good. We'll look for. Well, we'll have to get you back on sometime in the off season and hear that prayer before Super Bowl Fifty Five. But just appreciate you, brother. Thanks so much for coming on, for spending a little time with us. Obviously, best wishes next Sunday as we watch you face up uh, Tampa Bay. Maybe it'll be three Super Bowls for Stefan Wisniewski. Thanks so much for joining us, my friend, and we'll see you next Sunday. Thanks a lot, Jason.